Good afternoon, Patriots. This is the American Vision brought to you on the uh, broadcast uh, to you on the TLB uh, TV network and uh, brought to you by the Liberty Beacon Project. I'm your host, Bill Muckler, and I'm coming to you from Cocoa, Florida. And today it's my honor to have a guest, uh, an old friend, uh, Jeannie Weaver, who's coming to you from Cocoa Beach, Florida. And so everybody always wants to know what's the difference between Cocoa and Cocoa Beach. Now you know the difference. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, Jeannie, welcome to the show, and I'm so glad to have you on. And um, I, let, let me uh, try to introduce you as the best I can. Uh, Jeannie is an artist, and she's written a book, and uh, I have this book. Um, and uh, I also, it was signed by Jeannie for me. And the book is called Losing Todd, Finding Peace in My Heart, because Jeannie is a gold star mother, and her son was um, killed in um, Kandahar in Afghanistan. And uh, so I'm really honored to have you on, Jeannie. And could you tell us a little bit about yourself? We were talking earlier, uh, you came to Cocoa Beach in 1955. So maybe you can tell the people a little bit about Cocoa Beach because nobody understands what this is all about. <laughs> well, thank you, Bill. Thank you very much for inviting me to be on your show today. Yeah, Cocoa Beach, this entire area has changed a lot. There was nothing here on Cocoa Beach in 1955 when my family first moved here. But my father and my husband's father, too, were both aer uh, aerospace engineers. So they started early with the Navajo Project, working for North American Aviation at that time. But like it was unusual in those days. We moved around a lot. We, um, um, designs were done in California and then for launching and whatnot, it happened in Florida. So we moved every two or three years back and forth our entire lives. I see. And then, um, you, you went to uh, Florida Atlantic university, I, I believe if I remember uh, reading your, um, biography. Yes, I did. I went to Florida Atlantic University and, and uh, um, got a, a BA degree from, from there. And, um, uh, and then I, I got married and married my husband, Don. And um, he was in the Army at the time. And we went to Fort Dix, New Jersey. And then he left the Army after four years. And we came back to Florida and he went to Florida State University. And, uh, and then finally he developed, he, he began his career with the Foreign Service. And in 1976, we went overseas with two little kids. And uh, our first tour was in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, in Africa. So you, you really travel a lot. And uh, I've gotten to know Don uh, very well because he was the president of our uh, Military Officers Association of America chapter in Cape Canaveral. And he's also the one who signed me up as a lifetime member for the uh, Brevard County Veterans Memorial Center. So, uh, uh, and Don was president of the um, uh, MOAC when, when I joined that too. So uh, we, we have a lot uh, to share and uh, he uh, is a uh, former captain in the United States Army, and I'm a former uh, captain in the United States Marine Corps, so we have that in common. But let's, let's talk about you, and um, you, you're ma you majored, I believe, in art and communications, but you're really a talented artist. I, uh, everything I've seen is just uh, breathtaking, so maybe you could tell us a little bit about how um, you started um, uh, I guess, uh, painting and, uh, and other art design projects? Well, I began, I began dabbling in the arts when I was a little girl, and there's nothing that I liked better than that. But I know my father, <laughs> um, bless his heart, he did not want me to major in the fine arts because he figured I could never make a career at it. <laughs> so I, I went the other way, and I, I got a degree in Bachelor of Arts with emphasis in both speech and, and art. Um, I, studied, I studied art all of my life within the university and with life itself, and I actually didn't start oil painting until maybe about 20 years ago. Um, and uh, I studied three years with uh, a master artist in order to really 
understand how to use oils and to paint with oils. And then I went out on my own and uh, uh, I love it. I paint every day. Oh, that's, that's just fantastic. So that kind of brings us to the point where in this, in the book, and uh, I just love this book. And let me tell you, I got this book and, and the day, and Jeannie put the date in here, November 5th, uh, November um, 6th of 2015. So I've had it for a while and I brought it home and I kind of, I kind of leafed through it a little bit and I saw the art and it was a Friday afternoon and it, and it, this was at a veterans uh, event at the, uh, at Cape Canaveral. So the next morning I woke up and I thought, I've got to look at this book. And I started Jeannie and I couldn't put it down. I sat there from, I don't know, it was somewhere around eight in the morning till noon. And I read every word and I studied every photo in it. And I, I was just so impressed with it that it sat on my uh, coffee table ever since. It's never left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Bill. I, other than I guess when we dust around it a little bit, but it, it's always there, and it's it, it's just uh, it's just beautiful a beautiful book. So, will you tell us um, why um, why you you did the book, and and tell us about your son too, because uh, he he's a real American hero. Oh, he was a real American hero. He is a real American hero. Yes. Um, well, he was killed on September um, 9th, 2010, and in Kandahar, Afghanistan. Uh, he left behind a wife and a baby. Uh, Kylie was, he had just been able to see Kylie walk um, uh, via Skype. So she was about a year old when, when he died. Um, there's nothing worse than losing a child. And anyone who has experienced that will agree with me on that. Um, we decided early on, though, that we would not be quiet, that we would not be afraid to talk to people. We would not be afraid to talk to the press. And we were not afraid to, a lot of people sort of close up, and, and Todd didn't deserve to do that. So we were open with as many people as we could possibly be. Um, and we did want very much to be able to build a legacy for Todd because he was such a a very special person. Um, and I think it was probably about a month, maybe six weeks after Todd was killed. And we were all sitting in that well. The family was sitting in the living room and uh, they, they were discussing what we could do to create a legacy in Todd's memory. And I remember I couldn't really sit, you know, I would putter around in the kitchen and come in and out of the conversation. But one thing that Don and I did that I think was very, very important was that we really involved Todd's siblings, his brother and his two sisters. And it was actually, and it was actually Glenn, Adriana, Christina, and Todd's wife, Emma, who was living with us at the time, who, who were conducting this conversation. They were the leaders of the conversation. And it was the things that they were choosing that we would then do. And each of them had something that they said, okay, I'm going to go work on this and I'm going to work on this. And, and um, I think that really helped them because they were, they were so close to Todd mm -hmm. that it, it was really important for them to be a part of the healing process. So um, at the end of that conversation, they all had these jobs to do. And I remember saying, to them, well, what am I going to do? You know, one person was going to do this, another person was going to do nothing. They didn't give a job to their mom at all, you know. And so in unison, they all said, Mom, you're going to paint. And when they said that, I was standing in the kitchen and I just, the visions in my mind were red and black and ugliness and unhappiness and I thought no I can't I can't do that because Todd was too special I can't paint ugliness I can't paint fire and ugliness um so uh but I began to listen to the things that other people were saying about Todd and as I did that, and over time, pictures began to develop in my mind. 
and in January, four months after he was, he was killed, I reopened my art studio and I began to paint. And I painted every day, 10 hours a day, sometimes more, sometimes a little less, um, unless there was something going on that was family related, the kids were over for dinner or, you know, something that we were doing in memory of Todd, I painted. I did not show anyone the paintings. They stayed in my studio and I painted for one year straight. Um, so that would have been the entire year of 2011. Oh yeah, that, uh, yeah, exactly. The last painting was completed in January, 2012. And so uh, how did you get the idea then to take uh, these paintings and put them into a book? Because the book is so well done. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, um, Todd was a graduate of the College of William and Mary. Um, he graduated Phi Beta Kappa and Summa Cum Laude. And uh, he, was, he, he had the kind of personality that he was a magnet. Everyone loved him. Everyone remembered him. It was just the kind of person he was. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the college was very, very supportive of our family after he was killed. Um, and Don and I went one day and, and we asked them whether or not they might be interested in exhibiting the paintings that I had done. And um, they contacted Aaron de Groff, who is the CEO of the Muscarelli Museum of Art, which is um, uh, the, the Museum of Art at the College of William and Mary. And Aaron thought that it was extremely important to do this. And so 17, I'd only finished 17 paintings at that time, 17 paintings went on exhibit at the, um, at the college uh, one year after Todd was killed, and they were exhibited for two months. I left a little black book with the paintings so that people who, who uh, saw them could write something if they wanted. Mm -hmm. And when the exhibit was over, I was just amazed at the comments that I received. Um, it turned out that it was really important for me to tell the story because it wasn't only the story of Todd, it was the story of so many others. And there were so many people who saw the paintings and who commented who had um, no connection to the military and yet they could respond to the paintings because what I had actually accomplished was was um, creating the human condition and love, and they could they they could understand their own loss in family through those paintings, and so after I was I, <laughs> I was astounded I couldn't believe it I I went to Aaron de Groft and I said you know this has th this is pretty amazing what has been accomplished here and maybe it would be good to write a book, and he agreed. Mm -hmm. And so for the next year, I began to write, but I knew that it needed to be not just my, my feelings and my thoughts. I knew that other people needed to also contribute to it. And so the book not only has my writing in it, but it has the writing of not Todd's friends, but more professionals who knew Todd and some of them who came to know Todd after his death. Um, and who could give some insight into loss. Um, and so I think that's one of the things that makes, makes the book so interesting is that it's a book of art, mm -hmm. it's a book of stories, but it's a book of professionals also. There's, a, there's two psychologists, there's two priests, there's all kinds of people who are writing in that book to be able to not only tell the story of Todd, but to tell the story of of loss, of love, of humanity. Well, that certainly comes through in the book. There's no question about it. I mean, that's, that's what struck me. 
And I got to tell you, I'm having, a, I'm having a hard time with this right now because I remember when I read the book, I had tears in my eyes. And, um, I had, and I think I do now too. But, um, There's like, nothing wrong with tears. I think we're always trying to hide our tears. I cried for over a year. I cried through every painting. I, sometimes I think that there's more tears and water on those paintings than there is oil paint. <laughs> you know, I cried and cried. I cried mm. until I couldn't cry anymore, but I think we need to cry. We need to be able to show our emotions. I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. So then you, you got the book published and, um, and, um, also, your paintings are on display also. I, I think there's a, some revolving uh, uh, exhibits, but also some permanent exhibits of your paintings, too. Um, my, the, my paintings about Todd um, I, are here with me, but I do exhibit them whenever I am asked to exhibit them. You know, I'll always, I'm always happy to go and talk about my son and to show my paintings. Um, I'm always looking for places where I might be able to do that, that, that um, are, have the right venue for such a thing. Mm -hmm. um, yes, very definitely. Um, right now, I know that in 2020, they will go back to the College of William and Mary in the Muscarelli Museum for an exhibit. And that will be at the 10th anniversary of Todd's death. Okay, and then um, I, I don't want to change the subject if you want to talk about this some more, but I want to talk about the, um, the Veterans Memorial Center we have here in uh, Brevard County because you and your, your husband are very active in that. You've participated in that, and you talked about uh, Todd, you know, uh, having such an impact on, um, on people. But you and your husband also had that same impact on people because all of us can recognize, you know, the, the leadership and the professionalism and just the warmth and love that both of you exhibit to everybody. And you're, you're both so involved in so many uh, projects. And then you somehow got involved in a project that's really near and dear to all of us at the center, and that's the uh, monument for the four chaplains. And I wondered if you could Tell us a little bit about how that came about and um, what that was uh, what that was all about. Oh, that was just amazing. It was, I think it was two years ago, um, February 3rd, two years ago, I went to a little small sem um, ceremony in Cape Canaveral that was run by Chip Hansen. You know Chip. Yes, He's, our chaplain. Our chaplain, right. And... Uh, it was a ceremony in memory of the four chaplains, the four immortal chaplains who went down on the Dorchester on February 3rd, 1943. Mm -hmm. And um, if I had at one time been uh, familiar with a story, age had taken its toll on me and I was no longer familiar with it. And I listened to Chip tell that story. And as he was telling it, I, I had visions in my mind. You know, I could see it happening. And afterwards, he came to me and he said, Jeannie, I, I want very much to have a monument to these chaplains at the Veterans Center. Will you create it? Will you design it? And I said, I would. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, so I designed, I, I designed uh, the monument. It took a while um, before, I mean, first of all, Chip had to get permission to for it to be done and uh, mm -hmm. um, but it was dedicated um, over Memorial Day weekend at the, yeah. at the ceremony at the Vet Center. Yeah, there was uh, just this past week, uh, when people see this, it'll be uh, sometime, but it was Memorial Day of uh, 2018 that the, uh, the monument was dedicated. Uh, to give our viewers a little bit of history uh, is, uh, on February 3rd of 1943, the troop ship uh, Dorchester was torpedoed in the North Atlantic by a German submarine, and uh, the ship was uh, sinking, and I believe there were 1,500 um, troops on, on board the ship. I, you know, I may be wrong on the numbers, 
but I believe that uh, of those uh, 782 survived, and the reason they survived, or one of the main reasons they survived, was there were four chaplains on board, and these four chaplains kind of settled down the um, the troops and uh, helped get them a, off the uh, ship, and were about saving them, and uh, and giving them moral support. But they also gave the troops their four life preservers, and they ended up going down with the ship. And there was a uh, a Jewish rabbi, two Protestant uh, chaplains, and a Catholic chaplain, and they stood arm in arm and went down with the ship. So this is a story that really needed to be told, and that we we need to remember that there's that God has such an important part in our in our lives, and especially with our military. And uh, this monument has um, has four sides to it. And Jeannie, maybe you could tell us how you went about uh, getting that all together. Right. The, the story of the four chaplains is amazing. And, uh, and so we definitely wanted to pay homage to them and to honor them and remember them. Um, and and the, way I, the way I did that was through doing a, a painting. I did an oil painting of the four chaplains on the ship going down. And then that painting was created in bronze. And, uh, and so there is a bronze plaque on one side that is of uh, the image of the painting. Mm -hmm. And then the other three sides, another side tells the story of the Dorchester and the four chaplains going down. And then it was important to remember all chaplains as well, because chaplains pay such an important part in, in our lives today, in the military especially. I myself have had so many experiences from the, from the time that the chaplain with a military officer came to my door on September 9th, 2010 and knew how to approach me on that day. The chaplain who was there with, you know, after Todd was killed. There's so many experiences that I have had with chaplains, so I wanted to make sure that all chaplains were remembered. So there is also a, a section on the history of chaplains. The first chaplain was, was uh, 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 gosh, I can't remember, it was before we were actually in the United States, there was a military chaplain. And then there's another side where we have, um, uh, where, where we designed quotes from different wars that, that uh, were about chaplains as well. One in the Civil War, one, um, one in um, uh, Afghanistan, and one in Vietnam. And then, of course, on the one side that's telling the story about the four chaplains, there's a quote from a survivor. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is um, all chaplains, four chaplains monument. Yeah. And it was recognized by the um, organization for the four chaplains in Philadelphia. Yeah, and I, I was aware of the story, but not, not aware of the organization and, uh, and how it was, I, I, I guess it's known uh, nationwide, uh, but so, many, so few people actually understand it and know about it. And I think that when we had the celebration there, um, it, was, it was at 8.30 in the morning. And so, you know, a lot of people, you know, getting up on a, for a holiday uh, and getting there at 8 o'clock in the morning, this huge um, throng of people were there and uh, in the audience. And, um, and there were chaplains from uh, various parts of uh, the county and the state were there. And they all, uh, and there was uh, some speeches made and prayers the whole the whole ceremony was just um, amazing to me i was just uh, so taken back from it and I, I was just so happy that i was able to get up and get over there that early in the morning to attend i was so surprised i thought there'd be a half a dozen dozen people there you know and there was 150 you know <laughs> it was pretty amazing yeah there, there had to be at least 150 or more yeah and then at the end, all the chaplains linked together, linked hands mm -hmm. together all around the monument and uh, said prayers. So it was a very meaningful service. And I'm, mm. I'm, I'm just so pleased that we have that monument there. It wasn't the first one I've done. I've also designed two other monuments at the center, the, um, 
the monument to all who served in Afghanistan and the monument to all who served in, in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they're just, they're just beautiful. So what, what else would you like to talk about? Because I'm, I'm at kind of a loss for words right now. <laughs> People will find that a little bit unusual, but I am. <laughs> well, I'm really good at asking questions or answering questions. But <laughs> okay. Um, I, I guess we, we should uh, conclude then on a high note because uh, it's just been a delight uh, talking with Eugenie. And I know that we, we've been talking about this for almost a year and that you had some, uh, you had a surgery and, um, and your travel and everything. We finally were able to get this uh, together and, and do this. And uh, the next time um, you have something to uh, let us know and we'll, we'll talk again. Well, thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. I'll do that. Very definitely. Okay. Thank you so much for inviting me to talk to you with you today. Oh, it was, it was my pleasure. I'm honored to have you on um, with me. Okay, folks, uh, we're, we just had a quick commercial break and now we're back. And Jeannie's going to tell us a little bit about one of her favorite paintings and also about uh, Todd's uh, favorite dog. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Todd, Todd was really a lover of dogs. He always had a dog. We always had a dog. Sometimes we had to travel internationally with one of his dogs. But anyway, after he got married, he had, he had a thing about wolves. He, if he could have had a wolf, he would have had one. And uh, he finally, after he got married, um, he got the closest thing he could have gotten to a wolf. He got a Siberian Husky. And uh, he named the Siberian Husky uh, Tundra. And she was a beautiful dog, had lovely markings with the blue eyes and the black and the brown. And she was a lovely dog. Um, when Todd um, was, was killed, um, Emma decided that she would not be able to keep Tundra. Tundra was a dog that needed a lot of attention and Emma had a baby, you know, so I decided that I would take Tundra on and uh, Tundra was my soulmate for the first year, two years after Todd was killed. You know, she was just there with me all of the time. Um, she was with me in the art studio as I painted. And if I stepped back, I would trip. She was always that close to me. She just seemed to know that there was um, uh, a connection between myself and Todd, I believe. And in fact, um, one day it was raining and um, I often left the door. It was just started to rain a little bit. It was just drizzling a little bit. And um, I had gone, it was very close to Thanksgiving, and I had gone up to the attic, and um, I was getting things that I would bring down for Thanksgiving. And uh, I don't know how they were there on a box. I have no idea how they were there, but suddenly there were Todd's cleats, his baseball cleats, and Todd had been uh, a great baseball player. And um, I cradled those cleats in my arms and I took them downstairs and I put them on a bar stool. Um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them except I thought that maybe I might paint them. And um, I put them on this bar stool and at that point, Tundra, it started raining and Tundra came running into the house she smelled those cleats. She smelled Todd on those cleats. Mm -hmm. And she grabbed one of them and she took it outside. And I was so upset with her because if she took it outside, that meant she was going to, if the rain was going to get on it and it wasn't going to be the same, it was going to be cleaner than it was because it had all of the mud on it from Todd's last game. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she was a wonderful dog. I did end up painting those cleats. Uh, the first three paintings I did, I did in unison, and it was Todd's baby shoes, um, his cleats from baseball, and his army boots, a set of army boots that was returned to Emma. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but Tundra was with me until we decided to move permanently back to Cocoa Beach. And we had a condo here and Don um, had retired and we decided that it was time to leave Virginia and move to Cocoa Beach. And I realized that um, though Tundra would have been okay in the hot weather, um, because they do have an insulative coat to the heat, um, she would not be allowed to be into, in our condo. And, um, and so I thought, well, she's too special. I can't just give her away to anyone. She has to have a mission in life for the rest of her life because she's been so good to me. And uh, so I began to write letters to uh, different organizations that might be able to use her as some kind of a service dog for military people. And I must, I don't know, I wrote so many email letters to different places and I kept getting responses back saying, we don't, we don't train Huskies, we only take German Shepherds. And then finally, I received word from um, a training facility, a service dog training facility in Florida. And they said, well, you know what? We haven't trained a Husky before, but we'll give it a try. And the lady who was uh, the owner of this facility had a son who was in Afghanistan, and so she could really understand. So, um, Don drove Tundra down to this, this facility, it's near, near Gainesville, I can't remember the name of it right now. And um, Tundra went into training and I did not hear another thing. And I thought, oh, geez, I was wrong. Tundra was not smart enough to do this. And I was really worried that they had just given up on her. And then one year later, we got word that Tundra was a full medical service dog and would be given to a Marine who had served very close to where Todd had served in Afghanistan. And we were just so touched. So to this day, there she is serving this Marine who had served in Afghanistan the same time that Todd had served. What a wonderful uh, story. It's just, um, just heart, uh, heartwarming to hear that. And, and me and my family, my family and I, we, we love dogs too. And um, so uh, that, that, that's just fantastic that uh, Tundra can continue to, uh, to serve. Now, do you have, uh, you mentioned paintings and uh, you were talking about Todd's uh, baby shoes. Those are the red shoes, I believe, that are in the book, as I recall. Yes, we were, yeah. living, in, we were living in Budapest, Hungary at the time uh. when he needed to have his first baby shoes. And so unlike in, in the United States where you'd go down to Stride Right and get that pair of white leather sort of hard shoe for a baby, um, in Budapest they made these absolutely beautiful kid leather shoes that he learned to walk in. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really a, a totally realistic artist, but it was really important to me to, as best as I could, to paint in every crease, everything that, that, had, that was in that shoe that Todd had made. You know, throughout the entire um, um, series of paintings, I felt that I just, I wanted Todd to be part of, of those paintings as much as possible. Yeah, when when I looked at the shoes, I thought, "Gosh, these these are well worn shoes." <laughs> and yeah, so well -worn. It, that was so realistic. Are there any other paintings of Todd that um, might be a favorite of yours that you'd like to tell us about? Well, we were talking about chaplains earlier, so um, I another painting that I decided that I wanted to do was a painting on some of the things that had come back, that had been sent back to Emma. And, and so I asked her if I could borrow a few of the items that had been sent back to her. And so she gave me um, um, a, like a knee brace and gloves and a, a cap. And so I set those up on a table to make a still life of those three items and to paint them. And as I began to do that, well, the gloves themselves 
when I, when I began to set those down to paint, I realized that there was sand inside the gloves and that was sand from Afghanistan. And so I took that sand that I actually painted it into the painting so that it wouldn't just disappear, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and then I went to, to look at the cap and I realized it wasn't Todd's cap. It had a cross on it, a little tab and a cross. And so it must have been a cap that belonged to the chaplain. And I think that the chaplain just put it in Todd's effects to, you know, to put, put part of himself to be with Todd, mm -hmm. which just to me was just such an amazing, amazing thing. And again, a way that that, that chaplain spoke to me about how important Todd was to him and, and that love, that bond of love, because that's, that's what's most important in life is the bond of love and humanity toward each other. Yeah, and so something as small as that became so enormous in your life and, uh, and yeah. such an important part of it. Yes, yes. And it's one of the things that I thought of when, when we went, um, when I was asked to design the, the monument to chaplains. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, is there any, anything else that you would like to tell us? <laughs> We've had, we have had quite an eventful uh, session here talking about so many different things. Yes. And, uh, I, I, I really thank you for giving me this opportunity. I always love to talk about Todd. Um, uh, he was, he was a, young, a wonderful young man, and I am just so thankful that I was able to share 26 years of his life with him. Well, and we want to thank you uh, for everything that you've done and because uh, you, you've touched a lot of lives that maybe you don't uh, realize it yourself, but helping us to understand uh, what happens uh, to our servicemen and Todd being representative of um, those that are fallen. And, uh, and we've had a few in Brevard County that this has happened to. Uh, uh, so... Uh, you, you've been, you've been uh, such a, um, an important part to us and such an inspiration to all of us here in, uh, in the veterans community here in uh, Brevard County, and I guess the entire uh, county, and, and also uh, all over the country, because I know you and Don have traveled uh, back to uh, Washington, D.C., and to Arlington and various places like that. So uh, I'd, I'd like to thank you um, for all you've done for, uh, for us. Thank you, Bill. Thank you so much. It's been okay. a pleasure to be with you today. Okay, thank you. And, and God, bl God bless you, and God bless all of our uh, fallen heroes. Okay, uh, Patriots, I'm back, and uh, this is the inside uh, cover here, and uh, the book was published by the um, Muscarell uh, Museum of Art, and I just want to let you know that Jeannie did this as a work of love. She received not, not one penny of her for her time in the art or the writing of this book and received no profits from this book whatsoever. They, uh, they all go just into the cost of uh, uh, making such a uh, wonderful book like this because you can see, you know, it's just completely full of, uh, of art and, um, and everything. So, um, and, and if there are any profits, they go to uh, they go back to the uh, fund for her son in the um, museum there at William and Mary College. I, I hope I got all this right. I know one thing I got right for sure is Jeannie has done this as a work of love and uh, certainly not a, uh, a work for uh, profit or for money. She received nothing for it. The, their family is uh, all about giving. Okay, um, boys and girls, before I go, I, I'd like to uh, invite you to uh, go ahead and order this book from Jeannie. Uh, it's from her website, Jeannie Weaver, and uh, that's all in the article. And uh, you can uh, just go to Google uh, Jeannie Weaver, G-E-A-N-N-E Weaver, and uh, find the book. Uh, 
she has a beautiful uh, and well done uh, well web page. Also, you can see I've I've got my Sex for Vets shirt on, and uh, the Sex for Vets people have been so kind and generous to me. It's just unbelievable, and they've actually sent me a couple more shirts because I told them I loved them so much, and and they're such wonderful people. Uh, and uh, so anyway, uh, I, I want you, I want you to remember Sex for Vets, uh, a great organization helping our vets, and also. Um, I'd like to talk to you about um, the movie Revelation, uh, Dawn of a Global Government, which uh, we also did a uh, video on. So if you want to see the video on uh, Revelation or on Sex for Vets, uh, they're certainly uh, available to everybody. And of course, the one thing I'd really love you to do is get the book. <laughs> you can see that uh, 2020, A Clear Vision for America is um, the, uh, book that I wrote, and uh, I also have a new book coming out called 2020, A Clear Vision for Our Future that I've just might got finished. I've done so much research on this, and uh, it's it's all about our constitution, our culture, and, and our country, and it's the right thing for uh, us to be doing today. So, boys and girls, thank you so much. Um, God, God bless you all for watching. God bless Jeannie. God bless all of our service uh, fallen heroes and also our active duty servicemen, our vets. And uh, God save our country because we need you now more than ever before.